Hello, my name is Keshwani. S K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today is our day number seven. Let's see what we have for today. How far would I go? How long would I go? I do not know. Maybe 100 days? I don't know. And today is 7. Here's, here's the problem. We are told that in a town, every town collects some taxes from its residents. That's how the towns work. That's how they finance everything that goes on in town. Anyway, I don't need to make a sermon out of it. And uh, one of the sources for towns to uh, of, the, of the revenue is property taxes. In this particular town, we are told that the town collects That's what we are told. We are told that the property tax, tax on property worth 60,000 is 800. And what we are asked to compare are these two quantities. Column A, tax on property worth 72,000 versus column B, $1,000. That's all it is. We simply have to figure out if the two quantities are equal or if one is greater than the other. Now there are two ways you can solve this problem. The reason I decided to do this particular problem is because I was, well I don't want to give the game of it. Actually before I say anything at all, I want you to pause the video right now. Pause the video, make it, make a head. If you're going to watch these uh, math videos of mine on a regular basis, do it every time without my saying it because sometimes I forget to tell you pause the video solve the problem yourself any way you want to solve it solve the problem yourself get the answer and then resume the video and then pull and compare the work that you did on your own and the work that we're doing together so there you go pause it So, there are two ways of solving this problem. One way is what I call the classical way. I don't know why I want to write everything down. Classical way. classical way, the traditional way, the orthodox way, the conventional way, the geeky way, the nerdy way, the academic way, the proper way, the way that uh, your math teacher would expect you to solve this problem. That's one way of solving this problem, solving, the, solving this question. Just give me a second here, I'm trying to find out if we, de if we learned any of these words before in our vocabulary lessons. Yes, I also do vocabulary videos. And Strangely enough, these are very straightforward words which I use all the time, and yet I do not have seem to cover them. Classical, Orthodox, Conventional. Of course, the word conventional comes from the word convention. Convention has two meanings. One meaning of the word convention, you already know, a lot of people know it. One meaning of the word convention is a gathering or a meeting. People go to a convention, a gathering, a meeting, that's one meaning. Another meaning of the word convention is 
Now the meaning of the word convention is tradition. The equal sign should go here. The word convention means tradition, which is a noun, of course. Convention is a noun in the sense of a gathering or as a, in, in a norm, tradition. Watch what happens. We're going to turn this into an adjective. Conventional. Traditional. So if something is traditional, you say, well, it's, it's conventional. Anyway, there are two ways. There was a bit of a digression. If you do not know what digress means, if you do not know what digress means, which I do a lot, that is my tendency, type in Keshwani prep dash vocab dash day three and you will learn the word digress which means to go off a topic. That was a bit of a digression, I don't know why. We were solving this problem. The reason you don't do not see any numbers next to these three words because as I said I have not covered them yet for strangely enough. I don't know how I missed them, but we'll cover these vocab words in the future. We do a few vocab words every day along with the math problems. So these are, this is the tag you want to put in if you want to look for any particular day. Keshwani prep dash vocab dash day three. And this digress will pop right up. Anyway, that was a bit of a digression. So there are two ways to solve in this problem. One is what I call the conventional way, the traditional way, the orthodox way, the, the classical way, the geeky way, the nerdy way, the academic way, the way your math teacher will expect you to solve the problem. And then there is another way which I call the quick and dirty way. Which way should we do first? Let's do the conventional way first. Let's do the conventional way first so that you can appreciate the difference between the two approaches. I'm going to do it here. The classical way would be to set it up as a proportion. That's what most people will do. They set it up as a proportion. They will put down tax versus value. And we know the tax on the property worth 60,000. Is 800, and that has to be same as a tax on 72,000 versus the unknown quantity. And they sit there and they solve for x. The thing, nothing wrong with it if you can handle it. If you, if that, if you, if you want to do that, so let's go ahead and do it. Let's cross multiply. If you were to cross multiply and rule everything out, x would equal 800 times 72,000 over. 60,000 and now we have to do our simplification. This is where the things get nitty gritty. Three zeros drop out. I see how the zero that I can drop out with this one. Six can become three and this will become four and then three will divide into 72. There are two threes and seven and then one goes here becomes 12 that's the four. So basically we have 24 times 4, which is 6, 16, 8, 9, it comes out to be 960. So this quantity actually turns out to be 960. Here we have a thousand and the answer is B. Now I'm going to do the same problem in a little bit of an unconventional way. Okay? If you are curious how I divided 72, I was just talking just now here. Let me do it one more time so you can see it easily. 72 divided by 3. How many 3's in 7? There are 2 3's in 7. And that's a 6. And the remaining one goes here, joins this guy and becomes 12. Because you see 72 is same as 60 plus 12. So first we take care of 60. That, that's, that 2 represents the 20. There are 20 3's in the 60. One goes and joins this guy becomes 12. And there are 4 4, 3, and 12. That's how I got the 24 here. Let's do the non-conventional way. In a non-conventional way, what we have to understand is that the tax on 72,000, whatever it is, has to equal tax on 60,000 plus the tax on the remaining 12,000. And here we have 1,000 
we know one, we know the tax on 60,800, so we, I can write that as 800 plus 200. We are breaking this 1,000 into 800 into 200. We are breaking, we are breaking the tax on tax on 22,000 into two parts: tax on 60,000 and tax on 12,000. Which makes sense because whatever tax you pay on the 72,000 would have to equal the tax you would pay on the $60,000 and a tax that you will pay on $12,000 because it's a fixed percentage of the whole amount. Now, notice what happens. How much is the tax on $60,000? Well, this, this quantity, say tax on $60,000, is actually $800. So what you see in the box represents $800. I see $800 here, I see $800 here. You can subtract $800 from both, quant from both columns. And basically what we have to compare is tax on $12,000 versus 200. Well, 12,000 12,000 we know is a fifth of 60,000. Therefore, the tax on 12,000 should be the tax of therefore the tax on 12,000 therefore the tax on 12,000 should be the fifth of the tax on 60,000. One more time, we broke $72,000 into 60,000 and 12,000. Tax on 60,000 is $800. That's what this quantity is. Tax on 60,000, even though it says 60,000 there, it's not the amount of 60,000 in the box. What it is is the amount of tax that is due on 60,000, which is 800. If we subtract 800 from both columns, this 800 drops out, this 800 drops out. Now we have to look at tax on 12,000. Tax on 12,000 has to be, the tax on 12,000 has to be the fifth of the tax on 60,000 because we know 12,000 is the fifth of 60,000. The tax on 12,000 has to be the fifth of the tax on 60,000. What is the tax on 60,000? Tax on 60,000 is 800. Therefore, here we're looking for 800 divided by 5. We know, we know that one one tenth of 800 is 80. We know that one tenth of 800 is 80. Therefore, one fifth must be 160. So one more time. So that turns out to be 160. So this quantity, after all those things that we just did here, turns out to be 160 dollars. And of course, as you can see, $160 is, is less than $200, a difference of $40, which is exactly what we found here, 960 versus 1000. You see, here we have 1000, here we have 960. This is our column B, this is our column A. See the difference of $40, 960 versus 1000 that we found in the classical way, which is exactly what we're finding here. Tax on 12000 is $160 because 12000 is a fifth of 60,000 and therefore tax on 12,000 is going to be fifth of the tax on 60,000. Tax on 60,000 is 800. We have to figure out the fifth of 800. A tenth of 800 is 80. Therefore a fifth of 800 should be 160. And if you got lost a little bit, if I was going a bit too fast, which is okay, the beauty of this thing is that you can rewind it and watch it as many times as you want until you get a hang of it. Okay. I hope it was useful. I hope you found it uh, fruitful. If you wish to get hold of me for personal private tutoring for SAT, GRE, GMAT or TOEFL, go to any of these website addresses, send me an email. Or you can go to pishwaniprep.com and send me an email from there as well. Okay. Thanks.